Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out thermal interface material. This is the product you put between your CPU and your CPU cooler to ensure a good transfer of heat. Now, truth be told, I didn't have in mind this particular shootout. In fact, I'm in the midst of working on a major high-end cooler shootout, which will include the Noctua NHD 15, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360, as well as four other high-end coolers. And that is coming soon on the channel. But in order to do this testing, I had to decide on a methodology. And I actually turned to you, my viewers, in a poll I posted recently on the channel to ask whether I should use the thermal paste included in the box with each of the six coolers I'd be testing, or whether I should use a single thermal interface material. Now, this is, of course, open for debate, but I did decide that I would level the playing field. But then the question was, which thermal interface material should I use? And some people helpfully suggested I use a thermal pad. And that had a lot of appeal to me because it's a really clean solution. You put the pad down, you take it off, you can reuse it. The only question was, was it good enough for testing high-end coolers? And that's what this set of benchmarks is going to show you. Now I have four different thermal interface materials in the shootout that starts with the IC Graphite thermal pads as well as three different pastes. We have Arctic MX4, we have Noctua's NTH1, and then we have Noctua's premium solution, NTH2. That's not included with its coolers. NTH1 is what you get with its coolers. And Arctic bundles MX4 with some of its high-end coolers. I think they also bundle MX2 with some of their cheaper coolers. But they typically give you a packet rather than a tube, and I find that really irritating. Frankly, I can't stand using thermal paste packets. They're too hard to apply. So, you know, when it comes to what comes in the box with these coolers, to a certain extent, some of the solutions are better than others just based on the packaging. And so unfortunately, I'm not really gonna get to talk about that too much when I do my shootout of these coolers because I'm not gonna be testing all of the thermal paste that are included in the box because basically you guys have asked me not to do that. You've asked me to use a single thermal paste. That is what I'm gonna do. And in the benchmarks to follow, you are going to see which thermal paste performs the best and which thermal interface material performs the worst. And then of course, in the end, I'll tell you which one I decided to use in my upcoming CPU cooler shootout. So without further ado, let's jump into those benchmarks. Starting with idle to desktop, here I set my CPU coolers fans to minimum, which is around 400 RPM. I also have my case fans at minimum. And while the differences aren't that big, there is a pattern here that's gonna remain relatively consistent as we get into our load benchmarks. And the first one I'll share with you is CPU-Z's built-in stress test. I find this to be a really good approximation of game engine loads. Here, I'm pulling 185 watts at the wall with my Ryzen 9 3900X. So there's definitely a load on the CPU cooler and a strain on that thermal interface material. And we do see, again, a difference here between the IC Graphite thermal pads, the Arctic MX4, and then the Noctua NTH1 and NTH2, the NTH2 being the best by a small amount, but if you compare it to the thermal pad, it's relatively significant. Now, finally, turning to Cinebench R20, which presents a 214 watt load at the wall, definitely heating up that CPU. We find a three degree difference between best and worst. Again, the NTH2 solution is the best and the thermal pad is the worst. Now, these aren't that great in terms of the deltas and I wouldn't be too worried about a CPU overheating or computer failing if you use those thermal pads, but they definitely aren't equivalent to a good thermal paste. Now, some of you may be wondering why I didn't use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which gets great reviews from a lot of tech reviewers out there. The answer is simple. I don't have any Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. It's really expensive to apply it to six different coolers. I'd have to buy a $30 tube. And my intention is not to find the very best thermal interface material, but to find one that's good enough for a high-end cooler. And NTH2 is definitely good enough. I can virtually guarantee it's better than any thermal paste you'll get in the box with any cooler on the market. Now, for a lot of you, the benchmarks are probably all you need to see, but I also want to show you what it's like to use these thermal interface materials. Now, the IC Graphite thermal pad is super easy to use. The 40 millimeter by 40 millimeter model is a perfect fit for Ryzen CPUs, no cutting required. So I just slide it into place, make sure it covers the heat spreader of that Ryzen CPU, that it doesn't touch anything else on the motherboard because it is conductive. Please keep that in mind. But assuming it's in place, you just lower your CPU cooler into place, bolt it down, and you are done. You don't have to worry about whether or not you applied it correctly. 
Now I'm gonna to turn to the MX4 application. And while I do have the syringe here as opposed to the packet that comes with the coolers, I still find this pretty hard to use because it's relatively runny. So what that means is you have a little less control over how much comes out of the tube and where it goes on your heat spreader. So overall, of the solutions I used here in the shootout, I like this the least. But even so, once I lower my CPU cooler into place, I really don't have to worry about it. It is pretty thin, so it'll spread out pretty nicely. Now, let's turn to Nocto NTH2. I actually find this to be the easiest to apply because it just has the right viscosity. It comes out in a controlled fashion. You put down the amount that you intend to put down, no more, no less. It comes out nice and slowly. So again, a lot of control over this application. And like Noctua suggests for Ryzen processors, I do put a little bit on each of the four corners, again, having a lot of control over how much comes out. Now, while I didn't film my application of NTH1, it is a little bit different. I find it to be too thick and therefore on the opposite end of the spectrum from MX4, whereas NTH2 is just right. Plus, you do get cleaning wipes in the box that will help you remove thermal paste in between CPU cooler installations. All right, well, in the end, I think the results make it pretty clear that not all thermal interface materials are created equal. And if you spend a little bit more, you probably get a little bit more performance. Interestingly, the NTH1 and MX4, which actually cost exactly the same on the retail market, performed exactly the same. That's actually maybe not too much of a surprise because these two companies are fierce competitors. They certainly have on hand their adversary's product and they probably test it and price it to be competitive. Now, in terms of these IC Graphite thermal pads, you know, they were the worst performer, but in no way do I think that means they aren't worth buying. Look, the process of applying thermal paste is something that gets a lot of people nervous. And if you're new to building PCs, I would absolutely recommend you pick up one or two of these IC Graphite thermal pads. It's really a simple solution. It's basically impossible to mess it up, and it means you can't damage your system. Truth be told, I have destroyed motherboards with thermal paste. Yes, I admit it, I goofed up one time and I got the thermal paste in the pins and it basically ruined the socket of a motherboard that I had I could not recover that. So I would absolutely recommend this to anyone who's nervous about building a PC or who wants to test a bunch of different CPU coolers and doesn't want to have to mess with cleaning off the paste each time. So good solution for certain people. It's not the solution I will be using for my shootout. That is going to be NTH2. It's the best product I have on hand and Noctua was generous enough to provide a very ample amount of this product to me earlier and that means I can actually use that for all six coolers I have on hand. For my purposes of leveling the playing field between Noctua Arctic and all the rest, I think that using Noctua NTH2 is a good solution. Of course, if you have any questions about the thermal interface materials that I tested or you have suggestions for my upcoming shootout, which is coming very soon on the channel, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed this video, absolutely give me that like and subscribe. It really helps me out and gives me the incentive to create more content like this in the future. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.